Speaker. I call Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, it's not often that I uh, disagree with my good friend, uh, the member for Hutt South, uh, Trevor Mallard. Um, no, 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 you'd, you'd, be, you'd be surprised, actually, on, on the other side of the house. I, I can all the right one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes, we can take that up later, Mr Mallard. Um, but his, his, uh, his uh, depiction of his thought process around the flag, where he was a person who, who wanted to see it change, and then he's come over time to believe that it should stay the same, is not a position I agree with. I'm one of the members of the Labour Party who thinks that there is a place for a new flag in New Zealand. But I'm equally a member of the New Zealand public who's angry with John Key for turning a process... No, no, no. I, Jackie, Jackie Dean contributes yet again meaningfully from the back row there. I, along with a lot of other New Zealanders, am angry with John Key that a discussion about this, a discussion about our national identity, has become a vanity project for him. And there's absolutely no doubt that that's what's happened. Ironically, as Mr Mallard says, the vanity doesn't extend to coming to Parliament to actually talk about the flag change. But in terms of the way this entire discussion has now uh, played out in the New Zealand public, it's played out as being about John Key and his desperate desire for a legacy. His desperate desire to leave something here and a flawed process that actually doesn't, as Alfred Naro would, would have it, give New Zealanders a say in the way that they should on this. A flawed process is the actual legacy that John Key uh, has left New Zealanders on this matter. Mr Speaker, I have a feeling that two things are going to happen with this referendum. The first of those is... The, 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 yeah, that's right. I have, I'll see if Mr Mark agrees with these. I have a feeling there are two things that are going to happen with this referendum. The first of those is that the turnout in this referendum will be disappointing. The turnout in this referendum won't reflect what the National Party say to us is such a significant thing, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And yet I think we will find the turnout will be low, in part, Mr Speaker, because of matters that were discussed during the committee stages of the debate around the way that the referendum has been held, the technology that's been used, all of those things. So I think that's the first thing that I would, I, I would say. The second is that I suspect that the ridiculous order in which this referendum is taking place will come home to haunt uh, the National Party. Because by not asking New Zealanders the question of whether or not they wanted to keep the flag first, they put in place a process that will undermine their own argument, in my view. Because they're not being straight up with New Zealanders. They're not going into this conversation with New Zealanders saying, do you want this change? And Mr Speaker, it's been raised in this House several times before. If you were to spend thousands and thousands of dollars driving all around the countryside looking at different houses to try and decide whether or not you wanted to buy a house, and you hadn't even worked out if you had enough money to do it, how ridiculous would that be? <laughs> exactly. How ridiculous would that be? And that's the problem with this process. The complete failure to treat New Zealanders with respect, to actually look at this in a way that is a sensible and logical order, uh, is ridiculous. Mr Speaker, the Labour Party in the committee stages of the debate proposed two uh, amendments. The first of those was to defer the referendum for five years. I think uh, that was a sensible suggestion. Um, I agree with other Labour speakers that at this time in New Zealand's um, economic situation, this time in New Zealand's social situation, the time was right to push that back. And to my mind, Mr Speaker, I, w you know, I would like to see New Zealand have a conversation about our identity and about our nationhood that encompasses not only a symbol like the flag, which is important, but also the future of our constitutional arrangements. And to me, that's the thing that John Key wants to avoid. He wants to avoid the discussion about our overall constitutional arrangements, which should be happening at the same time. And I'm deeply disappointed that it's the vanity of John Key rather than the substantive issue of what kind of arrangements should we have in New Zealand. How can we be having a conversation like this about our flag without the deeper conversation about whether we're a republic, whether we're a constitutional monarchy? What, what does, yeah, exactly, as my colleague Nanaya Mahuta says, what does sovereignty mean today in New Zealand in the 21st century? 
But we're not having that conversation, Mr Speaker, because the Prime Minister wants to diminish it and reduce it down to his vanity project, his attempt at a legacy, because, Mr Speaker, real leadership would be taking on that bigger challenge. Real leadership would be saying, let's engage all New Zealanders in a conversation about how our country should be run and what values are important to us and what arrangements reflect those values in our constitutional uh, arrangements. But that's not what we've got. What we've got is an ill-thought-out uh, two-stage referendum process that's round the wrong way. So, Mr Speaker, the first of our, our considerations was to defer for five years to be able to take on some of those ideas. The second um, proposal that we put forward was to um, cancel the second referendum if 50 per cent of eligible voters uh, don't vote in the first. And this really is a serious question. If the National Party really believe that the flag is this significant and this important, why not adopt that? Why not adopt the idea that actually it's important enough that at least half New Zealanders have a say? But that wasn't picked up. And we know from the debate in the committee stages that that's because national MPs just aren't confident. They're not confident people will participate to that level. Mr Speaker, it is time for the National Party to front up to New Zealanders, to stop being so out of touch with what they must be hearing in their electorates and around the country about this flawed referendum process. That's actually, in my view, Mr Speaker, why John Key hasn't participated in the debate, because he's worried about it. He's worried it's going to go down, it's going to tarnish Brand Key. Well, he should front up to New Zealanders and he should accept that at least 50% of them should be allowed to uh, allow, uh, participate in the first referendum for the second one to occur. Unfortunately, Mr Speaker, both of those proposals by uh, the Labour Party were rejected in the committee stages. I, I want to refer, um, just before I, I, I come towards the end of my um, contribution, to the select committee process, because I think it does sum up what's gone wrong here, Mr Speaker. For, the, for committee members, and Alfred Naro did this when he stood up before, to say, oh, well, 747 people, as Trevor Mallard says, largely returned service people, get together and decide that they want to put forward their views. And the committee, um, national members of the committee, outright reject... 15,000, did it? You've 747 on that page. But 747 wanted to be heard and were rejected on that side of the House. And again, Mr Speaker, I ask, if they truly believe this is significant, if they truly believe this is the big change that they want to do in terms of national identity, how dare they? not give those people the right to be, to be heard? How dare they deny those people who've got so much history with the flag the right to be heard? So, Mr Speaker, I, I'm deeply disappointed that we've reached this point. As I said at the start of my submission, I still believe there is a place for a change in flag, but it comes as part of a wider process. And anything other than that wider process of consideration of our future constitutional arrangements makes this tokenism. It makes this process a vanity project. It's a huge lost opportunity for New Zealand to truly reflect on who we are in the 21st century. And instead, we're subjected to a political process for John Key to be able to give his so-called legacy to New Zealand. I think that's wrong, Mr Speaker, and that's why I oppose this bill. I call Jackie Dean.